Some time ago, a friend gave me this real-time clock module and some other random small parts. That stuff motivated me to build, you guessed it from the title, a clock. The RTC module needed something to talk to, obviously, and in my case that was an Arduino Uno. I have actually already made an Arduino-based clock some years ago, although without RTC module. That clock used the guts of a cheap wall clock as timer, and it shows the time and some other things using 160 LEDs. This time I wanted to try a vastly different display principle, known as the NIPCO principle. When I searched on Hackaday for that term, not much came up besides a well-made history piece and an older clock project. I thought I can change that and make a NIPCO clock. Here it is. Ok, um, one step back. What is the NIPCO principle? It refers to a so-called NIPCO disk, a disk invented originally by Paul Gottlieb NIPCO to convert pictures into electrical signals and back. A NIPCO disk has holes placed in a spiral pattern, so that when the disk turns relative to a specific window, only one hole at a time passes that window. During one revolution, all areas of the window are covered by a hole once. A light behind the disk is turned on and off at the right moments and allows controlling which areas of the window will lighten up. When the disk spins fast enough, a picture can be drawn line by line and is visible because of the persistence of view effect. In fact, NIPCO disks were an early attempt of making televisions possible before TV cameras and CRTs were invented. Let's start designing. Everything started with planning the NIPCO disk. The target number of pixel rows dictates how many holes the disk has and also the width of the window. The hole size defines the number of pixels per row. Smaller holes make more pixels. On the other hand, the total brightness goes down with smaller holes because light shines through a hole only once per revolution. Hence, smaller holes need a brighter lamp. I decided to use a disk with 5 rows and 8 pixels per row. However, dividing the disk into 5 segments leads to a quite large window, and so I use 10 segments instead of 5. This allows repeating the whole pattern on the other half of the disk, and each pixel is written twice per revolution. This doubles the brightness of each pixel and increases the frame rate. One window that is one tenth of the disk is quite small. I wanted more space and combined three windows to one display. Each window has its own individually controlled lamp and the windows together provide five rows of 24 pixels. A second display in the bottom of the disk has the same size and of course its own tree lamps. That design has a small downside actually. Because of the neighboring windows there are short time intervals where more than one hole overlaps one window. To eliminate possible unwanted pixels, the system switches off the lamps for these small intervals. That leads to thin dark stripes in between the windows, but I can live with that. I designed the disk pattern in Inkscape, printed it on inkjet photo paper and cut it out. However, I did not manage to cut precise holes by hand, and the paper was too floppy to stay straight. I threw away that disk. I converted the Inkscape design to G-code and used my CNC machine to cut out attempt number 2 from thin plastic. This worked, but the plastic was too soft to get clean, sharp looking holes. The holes were also all of the same size, because I realized too late that the holes closer to the center of the disk should be smaller. For my third attempt, I redesigned the holes. This time I used a triangle cutter on the CNC machine to mark the holes and the edge of the disk. I did not cut through, but carved the surface about a half millimeter deep. Then I used a chisel type tool to punch out the holes. This disk looked much cleaner and the holes had the right size. The picture created by the disk looked nearly perfect and I used that disk for the final clock. All parts are attached to a wooden background plate. I use a 12 volt fan motor to spin the disc. 
the clock runs on an 8.4 volt power supply. The motor rotates quite slow at that voltage, about 25 revolutions per second. The disc produces a 50Hz picture with that speed, because it has the whole pattern twice. The rotation speed is quite constant, although the Arduino cannot control it. Instead, the Arduino knows from a photoelectric sensor when one turn is completed, and it adapts the program speed to the speed of the disc. Early on I made a lamp for two window segments by designing and printing a template that I then populated with red LEDs. It had a thin sheet metal housing and a diffuser foil to even the light. I quickly realized however that this lamp was too dark. The LEDs were quite old and less bright than I was hoping. I decided to redesign the lamp and at that point also go for three windows instead of two. My favorite cheapo store had a 3 meter 90 LED RGB strip for 3 euro. The package suggests RGB LEDs or even color effects, and so this product has surely disappointed quite some buyers. On the other hand, the tape had 30 SMD LEDs of each color. I didn't manage to unsolder an LED without destroying it, but I quickly realized that I can just cut them out of the tape and still saw the new contacts to it. I printed a new template, glued it to cardboard, and populated it with LEDs. Then I added the wires. Each segment has 4 times 2 LEDs in a row. A module has 3 minus leads for the window segments and one common plus lead. I made two modules, one in red and one in blue. I wanted to give them a reflective metal housing like the first lamp had, but bending the metal precise enough was difficult. But in the meantime I got a 3D printer, which of course greatly simplifies making precise parts. I designed the housing in FreeCut and printed two copies. They are spray painted silver for a better light reflection and as before a diffuser in the front evens the light. The lamps are attached to the ground plate with little 3D printed clamps and aligned using a test pattern that shows the exact position of the borders. On the electrical side, six transistors connect the lamps to six digital ports of the Arduino. The case is designed in FreeCAD as well and then 3D printed. It was my largest 3D print so far and took about 15 hours. I am happy with how it came out, although I did have to do some fine tuning to get the first print layers perfect. The backlit is printed as well and fits to the case with a bunch of screws. On the software side, I used the timer interrupt of the Arduino to execute a function 80 times for each disk revolution. The Arduino knows for each function call which hole is in front of which lamp and switches them on and off as needed. For adapting to the speed of the disk, a counter is incremented in each function call. When the disk sensor triggers, the counter is reset to zero. When the counter was unequal to 80 at that point, the Arduino knows that it is too fast or too slow and the interrupt timing is adjusted. I recycled the code for displaying letters and numbers from my LED display project, as well as some scripts for converting bitmap pictures into Arduino data structures. Oh, by the way, I never made an update video about my LED display. It's working fine. It has a new smaller frame. And I added some totally useful functions, such as playing simple games using my tablet as gamepad. Otherwise, it sits as clock on the shelf above my workbench and is happy. Back to the Nipco clock. The upper section of the display shows the time, the lower section the month and the day. The Arduino interacts with the R2C module, mainly via A2C. The module has a battery and can keep time and date even when the power is off. At each startup of the clock, the Arduino asks the module for the correct time. Then it waits for the disk to spin up and starts displaying the time. The RTC module also creates a square wave on one of its pins, which is connected to the Arduino as well. 
the signal is used to advance the time and for some other timing things. Six buttons in the front are connected to the remaining digital pins of the Arduino. They are used for different clock functions. I can set time and date and also write text for the upper or lower display. In addition, I can draw pixel art and then show it on the screen. Well, done! Here's a finished Nipco clock. The Nipco principle might be quite archaic compared to modern persistence of view displays, where the lights itself are mounted on the spinning part. But I still find the simplicity of that principle fascinating, because it avoids the need for spinning circuit boards, spinning batteries or sliding contacts to get power to the rotor. That is all for this time. See you around. And stay safe.